and uh, in your opinion, traditional machine learning versus deep learning? This is a question that keeps coming up, right? Like, hey, uh, I should I even care about what came before? Uh, or is it only like deep learning right now? Or someone who's wishing uh, to sort of get into deep learning, but have access to, or like have knowledge of traditional machine learning system. They're like, this is too much. This is not the way I was taught, or this is not the way I learned. So there's this, uh, always there seems to be this barrier between traditional or like at least a thinking barrier between traditional machine learning and deep learning. I don't feel that, uh, but what, what are your thoughts on that for people approaching to learn or getting into this field? Yeah, so I mean, neural nets have been around for a long time. Like I, I remember my first research was with neural net and I gave up because the compute was not there. So in the nineties, uh, I thought I'll do my thesis in neural nets. And then I started working on it. And after one year, I realized it needs a lot of computational power to kind of do. And so, yeah, at some point I realized I won't graduate if I pursue this thing. So I said, okay, well, I need to graduate and get out of poverty soon. So that's, that's when I changed my, um, I changed my thesis topic to study ecology and do spatial modeling, which was also computationally intensive, but not as bad as neural net at that time. So Neural nets have been known to be powerful methods. I mean, there are theories which say it can approximate any function to any degree of accuracy, right? If you kind of increase the network. So the computation and the data, they're also very data hungry. So in the old days, we didn't have that much data. So now we have the perfect storm, storm in some cases, in some sense, right? Like we have data and we have compute power and that's why these methods are so successful. I mean, I would just think of them as powerful non-parametric function estimation technology, but then they are proving to be really, really powerful in very high dimensional settings, like, you know, when you're doing NLP, computer vision. So, but the underlying, underlying machine learning theory is still the same. Like we still have to think about uh, how to, how to optimize a highly multimodal problem. I mean, that that's really the hard machine learning problem. And then, you know, you don't have one good solution. You have many solutions. So what is the best way to converge to a good solution? How do you regularize? And uh, how, how do you do high dimensional model fitting, but still control overfitting? Like those things are exactly the same. And uh, yes, this is yet another parametrization. So I'm not seeing any issue with that. Yes, the software has changed. So we have to just get accustomed to the software. And in fact, the software is much easier than it used to be in the old days. Like if you use TensorFlow and PyTorch and all, I mean, that's actually pretty convenient. And the fact that we can actually do things so easily on such large amount of data, uh, compute on the cloud is actually, uh, it's actually amazing, right? I mean, uh, in the old days, I remember it, when I was, uh, when I started working on big data in early 2000, it was pretty difficult to kind of do like, I would write, write my own distributed computing programs and all I mean, it was not very easy to do these things. And nowadays it has become a piece of cake. So, so it's actually nice. I mean, I, I don't know why there is, I, I don't think there is a big, I mean, it, it might feel that way. Like, oh my God, this is a big thing, but it's not actually, it's the tools that are out there have made it very easy. So I would encourage everyone to embrace I mean, one thing in machine learning is do not kind of uh, shut down anything, right? I mean, if there is a new idea, try it out and uh, learn it and see how it does. And that is going to help you create the best method. Now, that doesn't mean the old style is not good because sometimes you will also want to use them as well, right? So in some cases, there might be practical problems where SDMs might make more sense, right? For the cost consideration or... Maybe you need some model where interpretation is more important. So you might still want to use that. And those simple method helps you understand the principles of machine learning better than others. And the most important thing, whenever you are building a more complex model, you need to have baselines, right? So how do you know a neural network is doing well unless you have a simpler baseline? Because with neural net model training, there are a lot of parameters you have to tweak. Things can go wrong when you're implementing. It's not like the method is bad, but something might have happened to your data or something might have happened to how you do your model fitting or there are so many places where errors can creep in and so having a baseline which is based on simplicity always helps you make sure that the more sophisticated method you're using is actually working right and so even for benchmarking purposes you need to know the simpler method so that you can actually appreciate the sophistication to more modern methods. 
makes sense. Thank you. Thank you very much.